Hi everyone! In today's video I want to do a shout out to all the awesome black creators I follow myself on YouTube. Some of these YouTubers cover the topics of sustainability, zero waste, minimalism and everything related. And there will be also other creators that do other topics, they do YouTube commentary, some awesome drama channels, some empowering channels, as well as some lifestyle bloggers and other creators. So just awesome people to follow. All the people I'm going to mention today, all the links to their channels you can find in the description below. And now it's the second part, it's just in general black creators on YouTube. I really love watching and also watching their channels helped me a lot in the recent week to, weeks to understand more about the racial injustice and other things that I guess I just couldn't understand thanks to my, I don't know, white privilege and me not being born and raised in America and kind of being a newcomer and trying to figure out the history of this country. I mean, I know something about the history, but you know how sometimes things we think we know are not exactly things the way they are. Her channel is called Love Nafi. She's so awesome. She uh, Her channel is quite new. She only has few videos. I don't even know how I came across this channel, but she's so awesome. You just have to watch her videos. So the way how she describes her own channel, it's Diaspora Diary is a series that addresses taboo and fundamental issues that concern all things African diaspora. So basically in those videos that uh, I watched from her channel, as I said, she didn't post many yet, but I hope she will uh, continue posting them. She talks about the struggles that black American people have here. And for me, as somebody who never comes uh, across same struggles, it was actually really like, I don't know, heartbreaking and very insightful to watch it. For example, she has this video, how being a black mom, you have to figure out how to raise your son uh, and how to teach them how to deal with the police. When it comes to parenting, when it comes to black parenting, I'm trying to really decide between do I teach my son to, you know, focus on his dignity, his pride, and to be free and exercising his rights, or do I teach him that this is about survival, that, you know, a police encounter is about surviving the encounter and knowing how to deal with the police is actually a survival skill. And especially in the wake of recent events, it's really crazy to think that we live in the same country and some people have to really deal with the questions, how do I raise my child and teach him how to deal with police while other people, we don't need to think of, of it. And basically it sucks that for me, who is an immigrant, is actually much more comfortable to live in this country just because I'm white than for somebody who is born and raised here. Another channel that I love watching and I would recommend everyone to watch, it's a channel called For Harriet. It's, I guess it's political and social justice, racial justice commentary. She does interviews, she does videos where, where she explains issues and basically I discovered her channel and I was really feeling that and I need to learn and educate myself. And I was watching, like binge watching lots of her videos. Uh, she also discusses movies and this is another thing that really disturbs me right now. So when I watch a movie, let's say I watch a movie like Help or Green Book, all I see in there, I see like, oh yeah, like there is a struggle of uh, African-American people in America. Oh, but I guess now it's, uh, it's not like that. So, oh, I guess now it's so much better. So these movies make me believe that Oh, this is in the past. Uh, now it's not happening. And only after I watch a uh, black creator explaining to me like how the movie Help is not a good movie. Uh, it's not a pro-black movie. How it's actually still white centering. Get an accurate feel for what the stakes are. The movie is so sunny and so bright and so vibrant that we don't ever really get to internalize the darkness of all this. Like Minnie feeds Hilly the ship pie and it's funny and Hilly gets sick and she runs away and the sissy spacek character who is Hilly's mom says run away Minnie run away. That scene is played for laughs and it's lighthearted and whatever but then you realize what the real stakes are. I mean if this is like a real, if this were a real incident, many would be risking literally being strung up. We don't, we don't feel that. 
in this movie and i think that tension is very important i will link it in the video please go watch her uh, commentary uh, about this movie and explaining how the way how this movie was done the way by whom it was uh, it's actually based on the book uh, how this book was written it's just super disturbing it's completely changed my understanding how i perceive movies created by hollywood Another channel that I really love watching, it's a, I guess you could say it's a drama channel and as well as commentary channel. It's a, it's made by creator Kate Black. She is a black trans woman. And for me, the first video that I watched on this channel made me really like, again, reconsider how I see the world and how I see, let's say, my own privilege. Not only based of ethnicity, but also based on my, I don't know, gender identity and other things and Kate was explaining in one of the videos I will link that video in the description below how it's not only dangerous to be a black person in America but it's actually even like I don't know triple or quadruple dangerous to be a black LGBTQ person and especially somebody who is a trans woman how she not only gets racist comments and aggression towards her from, let's say, white people, but also from people who are homophobic, transphobic, and everything else. It's weird. I think sometimes when you're LGBTQIA+, and you're Black, you often feel like you have to choose between being Black or LGBTQIA+. Like, sometimes you, you feel that way because a lot of Black people, their attitude towards it is like, oh, we don't do that. Like I said, that was very much the way that my father's attitude was towards it. It's like, well, we, we just don't, we don't do that, you know? And so here I am doing that. And it's like, well, I got to either choose that side or that side. And LGBT community tends to be very, very white, tends to be very, very white, at least the ones that I grew up near, right? Yeah, so go watch her channel. She's like a super awesome creative soul. Like I like watching her videos uh, about different topics. She does some drama commentary, but I, I really like how she does her uh, part on that. The Grapevine, awesome channel, and they call themselves as it's a fresh and innovative take on the panel style discussion. So it's basically a channel run by um, African-American uh, creators and they invite also other people and they talk about important topics. For example, I really like the video they did on uh, being black and LGBTQ at the same time. I will link that video below uh, in the description as well as... And people probably were sitting here like... Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to say it, but I was like, well, I'll say it. And that's okay. Yeah. Because it's like, we're, this should be an educational conversation yeah. around, like, when you're around groups of people who are black and trans, black and queer, black and however, that mm -hmm. we don't have to change anything up. Like, this is still the grapevine, and mm -hmm. this is still a black conversation because yep. blackness is inherent queer. Yeah. I think it's a great channel, and I think there should be more channels like that. I'm the person who reads a lot of books. That's why I actually watch lots of uh, what's it's called booktube channels. I, wa I watch them both in my native language, which is, which is Russian, as well as uh, I also started like watching more booktubes in English as well. So I want to recommend one channel. It's called The Artisan Geek. So basically on her channel, she reviews awesome books. Some of the books I actually also reading myself. Also, she even has some interviews. For example, she did a review of the book um, uh, written by Elizabeth Gilbert and she invited Elizabeth Gil Gilbert on, on the channel. I really like the way how she presents her content. I sometimes liking on YouTube just in general smart creators. I like to watch something nerdy and she's exactly the type of nerdy channels I like to watch myself. A few days ago a bookstagrammer reviewed The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. Morrison is an immensely distinguished African-American author. The Bluest Eye being her debut novel and one of her most known works. It follows the life of a young African-American girl right after the Great Depression. Due to her mannerisms and skin complex, she is deemed ugly. And as a result, she develops an inferiority complex and the desire to have blue eyes, a feature she equates to whiteness. Another awesome black creative I want to recommend. Her name is V. Uh, she lives in London. 
I came across her channel when somebody recommended her video about books about racism. So I was research, I was doing my own research, what I should read. And that's how I started following her channel. These books are going to be very much British centered, like a lot of them are. There's a few like American style ones, but they're mainly British centered just because I feel like in British schools, we don't learn enough about the British history with race and slavery and things like that and colonialism, imperialism, all of that stuff. And I feel like that's really, really important for you to know your place in the world and like what you're doing. You have to understand like where you've came from and stuff like that. So other videos she does on her channel, she's talking about her student experience uh, she's a student of oxford in london right now and i think she's gonna be a student of harvard next year or something like that i think she just got admitted into harvard on her description she says that she's uh, she's studying ancient history and archaeology and on her channel uh, she posts videos that are i think relatable to lots of people especially like students she does videos about how to deal with rejection she talks about her experience uh, being a student in Oxford and other things. The Come Up channel. Bukala, she's a software engineer. On this channel, Bukala talks about all the things related to software engineering, to tech. And I personally love women uh, talking about programming, software, about engineering, about being in tech, because programming or anything or like engineering is considered some like something like a male profession. So it's already hard to be a girl there. And I can't even imagine how is it complicated and how it's like really difficult to be there as a black girl. So I'm really glad that people like her have channels and inspire other girls. So you'll find an introduction to computer science course on so many different platforms like edX, Coursera, and even Udemy. There are so many benefits to taking an introduction to computer science course. A lot of these courses are extremely comprehensive, so they go through a wider range of topics that are really relevant to you. Another uh, techie channel that is run by a black girl is a channel Nicole Young, and she's uh, describing herself as self-taught software engineer. And on her channel, she describes her experience and also gives lots of tips how to learn coding, how to get a job, and other things that are actually important for everyone who wants to enter the industry. Another channel I want to recommend, it's more like, I guess, lifestyle and somewhat of stand-up, but not really stand-up channel. It's uh, by Kelly Stamps. In 2020, what we're not doing is looking dusty and giving people explanations, okay? I was following Kelly Stamps channel since it was like super small and tiny channel, and then I saw it's exploding. She's a smart black girl that has a very weird type of humor. And for me personally, this type of uh, humor resonates a lot. This is from New York Brother Man. Oh, I can't stand this guy. This guy always has some shit to say. You know what haters always have? Time and an opinion. Let's read his. <sighs> Another per The way how she describes her own channel is, I'm awkward, endearing 24 uh, year old with a passion for storytelling. I post unapologetic stories of adulthood, moving, traveling alone, great food and tragic bumble dates. Hello everybody, this is Kelly Stamps. I will be your professor this evening. Well, I see that you have nothing better to do in your quarantine, so you might as well tackle those demons. One of them is your overspending. But don't worry, I am here to help you. Minimalism 101. I am not a financial advisor. I am just a meme with discipline. And I was asked to make this video. Okay, if you're talking about funny people and really awesome humorous creators, I want to recommend another channel. Uh, it's called Evelyn from the Internet. She describes herself humor, a writer, and digital storyteller. Her channel is more, I think, like lifestyle. I, I, I Actually, personally, I don't know how to classify all those channels because anyway, Evelyn, like she is really funny. She is like... She can do, I think, videos about anything and you would just watch it because it's, you'd love watching it. Hey YouTube world, it's me, Evelyn. This video is made in partnership with Chromebook and my little brother. <laughs> I like 
to say that I am fun employed. So what do I do with my time, you ask? Along with my father, who I'm sure is worried. Writing stories. Fade in. Interior. Bedroom. Early morning. She's perhaps the cutest main character of a pilot ever in the history of television. Ooh, that's good. Shonda did say write what you know. <laughs> and watching a lot of Netflix. What? It's research. In general, I'm trying to read more, journal often, and find as many creative outlets as possible during this time. I just realized that most of the channels I was uh, recommending so far were from females. I don't know, I guess I'm more leaning towards watching other ladies uh, on YouTube in general, but I guess it would be unfair not to recommend some guys. Another channel that's, I guess, more like niche channel. I can't say that if everyone will be interested, but uh, I have this weird personal hobby. I watch vintage creators on YouTube. I don't know, I'm not dressing myself as in some like period costumes or vintage clothes, but I don't know why, but I like watching it. And there is a one black guy who's also doing vintage outfits. His name is Dandy Wellington and he describes uh, himself. My name is Dandy Wellington. I'm a band leader, entertainer, and style activist born, raised, and currently living in Harlem, New York City. Regarding the way I dress and why this particular style is something that I've gravitated towards and really embodied over the past 10 years is because little bits of it have always been a part of my life. Watching movie musicals and listening to jazz, surrounded by the great photography of James Van Der Zee, seeing the paintings of Romer Bearden. So much of this jazz age life is a, is a big part of me growing up. As a result, I gravitated to it wholeheartedly. The way how I came across his channel, and I probably will link that video as well, one of the girls I was following on YouTube, Rachel Marxy. So she did this video that uh, called You Are Born in the Wrong Era. So basically, all the vintage fashion lovers, they always are told by other people like, oh, you probably, oh, you're born in the wrong era. You era, era, era. How do I say it right? You're like, uh, you know, born in the wrong time. You probably want to be born in the times uh, your costumes come from. And often those comments can be also offensive for somebody like Dandy Wellington. For example, he's dressed in the costumes of the times when the slavery is, uh, was still there. And it's funny that people think that he would be more lucky living in, the, in those times. I mean... So many people will come up to me at events or say online, don't you wish that you lived back then? Um, my answer is wholeheartedly no. No, not at all. Though I certainly love the music, the music is a big part of what I do for a living. The film, the fashion, I would not be able to live the life that I do if I lived in the past, my people were persecuted. Current times are not perfect and ideal, but I don't know who would want to live in the uh, times during the slavery or segregation was there. But I mean, people are dumb and they leave such comments. And why I mentioned this video from Rachel, because she actually interviewed different creator uh, on this video. There is also, an, uh, there's actually another black girl in this video. Her name is Zena, but I don't think she has a YouTube channel. Yeah, so she was asking them how they feel when they are asked about, oh, are you born in the wrong era? It's a very, actually a very, very soul-breaking video, and I will probably link it as well, although it's not made by a black creator, but I think it's worth being in here. Anyway, I think that's it for today. These are the black creators I really love watching myself, and I hope you will follow them and also spread the information. I hope to be back with more videos on sustainability and... I don't know, simple life, minimalism, anti-consumerism, and other things. And if I will come across more black creators or even like uh, POC creators, I will try to bring more diversity to my channel as well. Yeah. Okay. Let's see you in my next video. Bye-bye.